right, today on this episode of Exquisite Seafood with Chef Justin Fields, we'll be talking about spatzel and halibut and how you can utilize them both, right? Halibut, something that you don't typically see with a spetzel, which is a German dumpling, but I'm gonna show you how to style it out in two delicious ways. Please stay tuned. All right, we're talking about halibut and spatzel today. You may ask, well, what is spätzle? Spätzle, spätzle, your German accent may come through a little bit. This is a German dumpling. Um, very simple, you're talking flour, egg, milk, salt. Work the gluten a little bit, mix all the ingredients together, and then you're kind of piping those through or extruding that, that dough through um, these little holes like you would spaghetti uh, into boiling water, right? And then you end up with these beautiful little dumplings. So let's really talk about the spätzle first and foremost. I have about two cups of flour here. Uh, gonna be adding four eggs and about two teaspoons or so of salt right and that's the first step I'm gonna kind of just break those yolks up and we're gonna work this dough a little bit what you want to do is kind of get to like almost like a paste type of form first and foremost with that egg and that flour and then we are going to add our milk all right, here comes the milk. Milk goes in. And what we are looking for is this almost like pasta s type dough. You may need to add a little bit more milk. Sometimes I add a little bit of water as well to help thin out the dough, which is probably what I'm gonna do here. Just add a little bit of water just to make sure that that dough is nice and thin. I had the milk in there, the eggs, the salt. Very simple kind of approach here, but very versatile, okay? Like once you get this down, you can utilize this with almost anything that you can imagine. If you can imagine like Italian flavors, if you can imagine almost like uh, Mexican flavors, um, you can do that because this is a blank canvas dough, almost just like a pasta, right? When you talk about pasta, you're talking egg, you're talking flour, a lot of the same ingredients, but this is a German style pasta or, or dumpling. And as you can see, I'm trying to develop that gluten, okay? I'm trying to get that, that stretchy pulley and I'm almost there as it is but just keep on working it. It's almost like if you think of pizza dough, right? Pizza dough, the more you work it, the more chewy that, that, that dough is going to be, right? The less you work it, it's gonna be more uh, flaky, crispy, almost like biscuits, right? If you make biscuits, if you overwork that dough, you're gonna have a tough biscuit. If you work that dough just very nicely and knead it a few times, very flaky biscuits. We're kind of trying to develop the gluten, like I said, and get that stretchy pulley, and we're almost there. Right, so once we have that finished, we're gonna move over to our boiling water. There's a little bit of salt in here, so I'm not gonna add salt to the boiling water, but I'm gonna show you how to execute this and get that beautiful dumpling going into the water. Let's transfer over to the stage now. All right, so we talked about boiling our spatzel, right? So I have some boiling water right here, as you can see. Um, what I have on top is that perforated pan that we talked about, right? So the perforated pan, I'm gonna take my dough, put it over this perforated pan and kind of push it through. So you end up with these little uh, drops of like dumpling that fall into the water. Once they come to a float, they're good. We'll go into the water to chill them and then out of the water to go to the next step. All right, what I'm gonna do or what I like to do um, when doing this, I like to add a little bit of oil on top of this perforated rack, just because as you can imagine, you got that steam billowing up and the dough is gonna kind of cook on there. So it just makes it easier to, to get it off. Um, and I also have a scraper. After I add the dough, I'm gonna scrape it in and make sure that all that dough makes it through the holes. So, special dough, like we said, stretchy pulley, right? We're looking for that gluten, and that's a sign that the gluten is there, and we have a nice chewy dumpling. So, I'm just gonna add this slowly, step by step, probably three rounds of this, just like that. And I have a towel here. What I'm doing is just holding this on top and working that through as such very easy process once you get your dough made this part of the game is very simple okay so we're gonna do another round I'm probably be able to do all this in one shot here so another round holding it and just working it through and once we remove this top you will see 
how these dumplings just kind of take form inside that boiling water. So there you have it. And our dumplings are floating. I have a little spider or a sieve here, and I'm just kind of working them and making sure that they're good to go. My, my dumplings are floating. I'm gonna give those about two, three minutes actually, just to make sure that my dumplings are fully formed, not doughy anymore. And then from there, we're going directly into the ice water. So let's give it a test, just like pasta, right? You're looking for that kind of al dente kind of uh, approach to it. Ha. Huh? Yeah, we're good, we're good. So out of the water you go. You see how easy that was? I mean, literally less than five minutes uh, from putting that dough into the water to the dumplings actually being done. When they get up. A nice close up of that, right? You see those dumplings. Like we said, this is a, a German style of dumpling. Um, you can use this in chicken soup as well. You know, like one of the, the, the nicest things that I've done, if you want to make a nice chicken soup or like chicken and dumplings, this is a great little dumpling recipe to utilize towards that. Once they're chilled, you just need to get that residual heat off, shaking off that excess water, and then we're going into our bowl right here. A lot of spetzel love. You know, this is great for clearing out your cabinets, your, your fridge, right? Make this dough, and you can almost utilize anything you want in your fridge to saute with this and add a protein on top. We're gonna to talk about how we do that in the next step. Okay, so we are back on our range. We have three pans on the heat, about a medium high heat on all of them. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing two different Spetzel saute preparations in the bigger pans. One is gonna be bacon and asparagus and onions, very earthy, hearty. The other one we're gonna do a play on elote, which is your Mexican style street corn with the flavors of Spetzel, all right? And then we're gonna be doing an orange and mustard glazed halibut over here. We've already grilled some halibut off that we'll be going with the elote style. This one we'll be going with our other style, right? So let's start with our fish. A Little bit of olive oil in the pan. Uh, halibut we have cut down into little medallions. Salt, pepper over the top. We're gonna start there and get a hard sear. And then we're gonna start to build that glaze in the pan after that. So. Let's get the fish down, getting that nice sear. That sound is what you want to hear. You want to get that sizzle. Once again, we're using halibut uh, from that company Beaver Street Fisheries. Uh, and they have a brand called Seabest. And really great products. Um, looking to get into retail a little bit more. You should see those guys out there as they start to proliferate the market. But I'm a huge fan of theirs and their seafood works amazingly with these type of preparations. So, bacon, we're gonna start with bacon in the other pan. This will be our spetzel build with the asparagus, right? Your bacon needs to render down a little bit. Back there, we're gonna allow that to do that. Over here, we are going to start with a little bit of butter. Right, so we have that butter going in the pan right there, about two tablespoons. Turn my heat down just slightly. Now on this one, we are going to start with our spatzel in the pan first. You want to get that brown on the spatzel. So my butter started to brown a little bit also, which is a good sign. A little bit of nuttiness to the dish. So we're just allowing those dumplings to kind of brown up and get a little bit of texture on the outside as well. My heat has been lowered and we're just rolling with that, All right? Bacon is getting worked as our fish is cooking as well. So the next step in this pan, once this is brown, we're gonna add our veggies, our asparagus and our red onion, and just kind of show you. What I really like about using spatzel, like I said before, it's almost a way to like clear the kitchen cabinet, clear your fridge. Hey, I got an onion, I got a little bit of bacon, I got a little bit of spinach or asparagus, right? You can take all those ingredients and add them to this saute and get a really great final product on that. So just gonna work this bacon a little bit. My bacon is starting to come up. So I am going to go ahead and add my red onion. About two tablespoons on the red onion. You might ask, hey, why am I cooking the spetzel first on this side and I'm not towards the back? Because I have some veggies and some things over here that I have to cook a little bit more. 
that we have over here. We're gonna add some corn to this. We set a lote, right? So we're gonna add some corn and allow that to kind of cook up. You don't need to overcook that too much, but these onions and this asparagus and this bacon needs a little bit of a second to get come together. I'm at a good point to add my spatzel to the other pan. And I'm just going to allow that to come up. I'm going to go ahead and flip my fish over and then show you guys how I do this almost glaze over this halibut to get it nice and beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower my heat a little bit. I'm going to add some butter because again, we're building a glaze in this pan to coat this fish. So butter goes in, I'm gonna let that melt down a little bit. I'm going to also add a little bit of whole grain mustard. We are going to squeeze this beautiful orange over the whole thing. So if you can imagine butter, mustard, orange, right? These flavors will coat the fish, but will help it glaze up in the right fashion will be that brown sugar. I just want you to see that, that browning that you get on there. That's exactly, exactly what you want. I'm gonna put that to the side so it doesn't overcook. Take this one and move this one down. That's the same, same thing I want to happen here. I'm not there yet, but I'm gonna let that keep browning over so we get that nice, beautiful color on there. So, brown sugar, right? The brown sugar is what will glaze this fish in a beautiful way. Add a fair amount in there. And then what I wanna do is make sure that that fish is separated from the bottom. All right, we're essentially glazing this fish inside the pan. You just built a nice orange and mustard glaze on top of that fish, which will go with our asparagus and spetzel. So our spetzel is in, starting to brown nicely. Asparagus goes into that. Now we set a lote on the corn, right? The spatzel corn in the back. A lote street corn, adding about three quarters of a cup. I have a little bit of uh, chipotle spice powder that has a little bit of garlic, um, a little bit of chilies in there. Gives you that nice lote type of texture and flavor. We're gonna put about a tablespoon of that into this mixture as well. And then we're gonna hit that with a little bit of cream. Beautiful. Just a wee bit of cream to, to kind of tighten everything up towards the back. Not too much. Our fish glaze is coming together nicely. All right, we're gonna take this one off the heat. Our elote spatzel is looking damn good, right? And now we're just allowing that cream to kind of reduce down. Nothing to bind this together over here, though. We're going a little bit lighter. I'm gonna turn that heat off. What I wanna do is add a little bit of salt. We do have bacon in here, so not, not too much. And some freshly cracked black pepper. We're gonna do the same back here. We do have the chilies back there, so not too much, but you don't want it to be under seasoned either. Beautiful. All right, now let's go to plating. All right, so now we're ready to plate. We have both our spat sole sautés ready. We have our uh, glazed fish, and then we also have our grilled halibut that we did. Just to tell you about the halibut, I kind of use the same flavors that I use in the elote towards the halibut. I did aioli grilled, so we took some mayonnaise, some of that chili flake, a little bit of lime, tossed the halibut in that, and just grilled it off, right? So a nice pairing along with um, your spat sole. But as you guys know, I love to do a fresh finish, right? So I'm gonna add some fresh herbs uh, to both of these. We're gonna do a little bit of chopped parsley uh, in our bacon and asparagus spetzel saute. Just a nice rough chop. We're not trying to get too fancy. Right, so we're doing that for this saute over here. Add that in. You already got that butter in there. 
Sorry, there's butter in this one. This is the bacon fat that we're dealing with on that side. So that bacon fat, you cannot go wrong there. And then inside our other special, our elote special, just a little bit of cilantro, right? So if you think of street corn in Mexico, um, you know, they add a little bit of mayo to that corn, a little bit of lime, <clears throat> some fresh chili, and you just kind of walk with that thing on a stick. We're trying to, to um, mimic those same flavors, right? So I took the, the mayo aspect, went on to the actual halibut, but you had the chilies, you have the corn inside of your special saute here. So taking all these notes of, of different flavors and profiles, when you say a lote, you want to have that effect when you go to actually eat it. So I'm going to start with this bad boy right here. I didn't, you know, you notice that this is a lot, a lot less saucy or thick than this one is. And that was purposely done. You know, this is, again, this is a lote. We wanted it to kind of mimic that, that feeling and those flavors. So just to show you the difference on how, how these two work, but we're gonna go and plate up our spatzel here, right? So I'm just gonna put a big old pile of this right in the middle. Actually, you probably make a, a nice little line because we have these, these medallions of um, halibut that will be going right over the top. Really tasty. Okay, so there you go. Right, that's number one. And what we're gonna do with that is we're gonna take our fish that is nice glazed and just put those medallions over it, right? It almost has its own sauce with that mustard glaze, orange, brown sugar. If you, you can imagine the flavors, right? We're talking bacon, asparagus, um, all those different things. And then right, right at the end, you just take that residual, residual liquid and just kind of pour it over. Melds with that spatzel to the side. It looks damn good, right? A little bit of a different approach here versus the, the other plate that we're gonna do. So you have that one, and now we're gonna go with our elote style, if you will. So again, take that elote. You have corn in there, the spetzel. You almost, you know, you're talking German spetzel, you're talking elote, which is Mexican. We got halibut, which we've treated in different styles. Just wanna show you the versatility of the ingredients that we're using today. So just dump the rest of that right back out. Beautiful set. Give that a nice wipe down. Of course, make sure the plates are looking good. And then we're gonna take that grilled halibut and put that right on the top. Okay, of course, you cannot have a lote without a little bit of lime. So we're gonna add just a little, a little thing of lime towards the side. Maybe a couple of those, just so people know, hey, you wanna squirt that right over and get down and eat. It brightens everything up. And then what really sells it is this cojita cheese, right? So it is a very crumbly Mexican cheese, almost like Parmesan in the crumble. But it has a very, a very sharp flavor, almost like a, a muted feta cheese, if you will. But this is what you'll find in Mexico on that elote corn. So we're really trying to sell that flavor profile. And there you have it. So we're talking spetzel, two different ways that you can utilize with seafood. Dig in. All right, so we saw some awesome plays with spetzel today paired with halibut. It's a great way for you guys to empty out your fridge. If you had a little garlic, a little bacon, a little this, a little that, mix it in the pan with that spetzel and come up with a great dish. Hope you guys took notes and as always, Keep cooking. Chef J Fields TV, Instagram, and Facebook. Don't forget, I'm out.